So this plant standing right here in front of me is uh, wild parsnip. And this is a widespread uh, invasive species in North America. It rapidly takes over and chokes out almost anywhere it can uh, get a foothold. And this is a nauseous plant, uh, much like giant hogweed. It has a photosensitive chemical in its uh, clear sap where if it gets on your skin, it can cause photodermatitis. It's not nice. It can leave uh, permanent red scars. It can last for uh, several months to uh, several years. If it gets in the eyes, it can cause blindness. So it's definitely something to be cognizant of. You want to uh, always cover up if you're using this plant or you're going to be anywhere around it trying to eliminate it. It uh, goes to seed late in the summer and grows these uh, yellow flower umbels, as you can see here. When it goes to seed, it can really spread rapidly. The uh, leaves of this plant, at the tip here, it's got a diamond-shaped uh, tip here. So this plant has very uh, broad compound leaves. Again, uh, compound meaning across from each other in a ladder formation down the branch. And alternating means they go one, two, three, four, and alternate down from each other like a step. So they have a hollow stem because they're a member of the uh, parsley slash celery family, much like other uh, plants that I've shown you here today, like water hemlock. And uh, the uh, parsnip is completely edible. It's still a parsnip, just like it sounds. But uh, if you're going to use this plant as a wild edible, you have to avoid contact with the uh, clear sap located from the top of the parsnip up. you got to discard that. And uh, like I mentioned with the valerian, if you're going to uh, utilize its root for uh, consumption, you want to pick uh, first year plants that are not at this stage in flowering because most of the nutrients is gone within the tap root. Secondly, it's going to be like chewing on a piece of ironwood. It's uh, not going to be palatable. So, right over here, we have first year plants that haven't yet gone to uh, flowering stage. They're going to grow uh, a little taller than this, and then they're going to grow flowers the next year. So these are the uh, type of plants you're going to want to pick here. So right here in front of me, I've uh, pulled the first year parsnip out of the ground. It's got a long carrot type tap root. It smells heavily of parsnips. And uh, right from the top of the tap root down is uh, completely edible, either raw or cooked. From here up is, uh, you got to discard that. And if you're ever handling a plant like this, you always want to wear gloves. So if you locate a uh, smaller parsnip, it may uh, confuse you if you're uh, fairly new to this because the, uh, all, the uh, compound leaves kind of look like valerian leaves, but uh, once you get the two side by side, it's quite easy to tell the difference. Parsnip are uh, quite broad by comparison to valerian which are uh, closer together, smaller, and uh, longer with their uh, very distinctive, uh, widely spaced teeth sticking out of the leaves, and their uh, brown stem. The uh, parsnip is uh, definitely much broader leaves. <clears throat> So this plant right here in front of me, I have my hand on as a wild carrot, growing right next to this wild parsnip here. Wild carrots are identified from poison lookalikes like uh, poison hemlock because of this uh, fuzzy, fuzzy stem it has. That fuzzy stem is a giveaway that this is a wild carrot. And uh, this uh, plant is going to go to flower here uh, later on in the season. It'll grow a white flower humble head. And uh, this is also distinguishable from poison hemlock because right in the center of the white flower head of the wild carrot, there's a single uh, black to purple flower. It's small, but it's there. Poison hemlock doesn't have that. So this is the taproot on the uh, wild carrot. It's fairly small. 
and uh, this is what you want in a younger first year plant. Once they get uh, very large and grow a flower, the carrots aren't uh, pal palatable because they're quite hard and they lack nutrients. The uh, leaves, believe it or not, a lot of people toss these out, but these contain uh, many, many times more vitamins and minerals than the actual taproot itself. So you may want to discard the main stem, but these little fine parsley looking uh, leaves are highly nutritious and uh, I recommend keeping them if you're going to use this plant. These grow quite in abundance along with the wild parsnip, but I would personally uh, be foraging on wild carrots as to the hazards involved with handling wild parsnip because it uh, does cause photodermatitis. It is a uh, noxious weed. The carrot in comparison with the parsnip has a uh, much sweeter smell and the parsnip is a more pungent smell. In this picture scene here on the left we have the flower head of a wild carrot. On the right we have the flower head of poison hemlock. Note the consistent texture in the flowers of the wild carrot flat characteristics and as earlier pointed out the purple distinct flower located in the center of the flower head. On the right notice the little mini umbels of the poison hemlock flower head how it doesn't go together to form one consistent flower structure but rather spaced out mini umbels and it's a uh, dome like feature compared to the relatively flat wild carrot head. In this picture seen here on the top picture we have the uh, flower head of a wild carrot and on the bottom picture we have the flower head of poison hemlock. Note in the top picture of the wild carrot the feather like uh, bracts on the bottom of the umbel where the stem begins. And note on the bottom picture of the poison hemlock flower head how it's bare. It, ha it doesn't possess these feather like uh, bracts that the wild carrot does. This is a distinct characteristic. In this picture seen here, on the left we have the leaves of wild carrot, on the right we have the leaves of poison hemlock. On appearance the leaf of a wild carrot appears to be flared out, more feather like, more full as it were, whereas the uh, picture on the right, the poison hemlock leaf, is uh, much flatter in shape. It's not, it doesn't have a uh, flared out feathery like texture that a wild carrot does. Secondly, uh, the poison hemlock leaf has a very dark distinct green color where the uh, wild carrot is a much brighter uh, green. Compared to the wild carrot, the leaves of poison hemlock are very triangular and broad and spearheaded shaped. In this picture seen here, on the left we have the stem of wild carrot. On the right we have the stem of poison hemlock. The stem of the wild carrot is very hairy, green and striped. It doesn't possess any purple or red splotches. On the right, the uh, stem of the poison hemlock is uh, hairless, no hair at all on this plant. It has purple to red splotches or stripes. And it uh, usually starts the most at the bottom of the plant and as it goes up the uh, red and purple splotching thins out. Here we have an up and down comparison of a wild carrot and poison hemlock. The top root is a uh, wild carrot. As you can see here the root on the top which is a wild carrot doesn't have any red splotches at all. On the bottom here you can see this is the poison hemlock. It has that distinct red splotching that starts off very strong at the top of the root where the bottom of the stem is and it works its way up the plant. As to the root itself they look almost identical. It's uh, no way to tell them apart. But it's worth noting that uh, the wild carrot obviously has a very strong carrot odor, whereas poison hemlock, it does not have a carrot odor. If you crush the leaves up or break the uh, taproot into and smell it, it has a very rank odor. It's often described as uh, mice inhabited place or uh, musty attic, which I agree, it doesn't smell anything like carrots.